How's it going everyone, Tyson Gaming here, and welcome to my next episode of my Pokemon Red Randomized Nuzlocke. Last time on, obviously we started our new Nuzlocke challenge, and managed to actually accumulate quite a few good team members. If you're curious on what the team's looking like right now, take a look just at this, my custom trainer card, which obviously has my Twitter, which you should follow, my YouTube channel, which you should definitely subscribe to if you like seeing this series, and of course, all my team members. So, so far we have Spyro the Dragonite, Dash the Rapidash, Sing the Clefable, Snake the Ekans, and of course, Striker the Charmeleon. Uh, with this trainer card, I'm going to show it every so often throughout the series, mainly when I have like a new team member or like a major team change, and then I'll bring it back and kind of show it off. But anyways, uh, plan for today's episode is to obviously get through Viridian Forest and take on Brock. Mainly for one of two reasons. First one, obviously because it's, you know, the main purpose of the challenge is going around beat all the gyms and then beat a champion. But two, and the major big one, is so I can get some TMs and hopefully get some good ones. And uh, mainly, the main reason for that is because of Spyro. Because for whatever reason, in Gen 1, Dragonite does not learn any moves. Like, let me bring up Spyro's move set so far. So obviously he knows Rap, which is honestly one of the most broken moves in this game, Leer, Thunder Wave, and Agility. A pretty decent move set so far. However, the problem in here is, is that this is pretty much what he's going to know the entire playthrough. Because Dragonite does not really have a learn set. Like, the next time he's going to learn a move, is going to be Slam at level 35, Dragon Rage at level 45, and then I think Hyper Beam at like level 60 or something. So this is pretty much the move set I'm going to be rocking with. I mean, obviously it's a decent move set, but with the team the way it is, I have quite a few weaknesses, and with Spyro's only attacking move being Wrap, it's kind of looking a little dicey for me. So I'm really hoping Brock has an amazing TM for me to teach Spyro. But anyways, obviously, plan for today is to go take on Brock. And before I get to that, I'm actually going to do a little bit of training in the route up here. Yes, wow, I'm actually doing a little bit of on-camera training. And usually I would do all of my like big heavy training off-camera. But since we're back in the Game Boy era of Pokemon, I can use Speed Up again. I can use Speed Up a little more freely because it won't mess up my recording at all. So yeah. So the plan, at least for right now, is to get my main team members up to at least level 7 or 8. And the main team members I have right now are obviously Spyro, Striker, and then Sing. They're kind of the ones I'm going to be working with right now. Okay, level 5 for Spyro, which is good. So, yeah. And obviously, if you guys like what you see in today's video, make sure you hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already, because I am trying to hit 400 subscribers before the end of 2022. So, if you haven't already subscribed, and if you have subscribed, don't go anywhere, and make sure you show off to a friend, maybe they'll like it too. And comment question of the day. What was your first Pokemon game? And who was your first Pokemon partner? For me, my first Pokemon game, like, like my first main series Pokemon game I've ever played, was Pokemon Leaf Green. My Pokemon Leaf Green back for the, the Game Boy SP. And my main partner, or should I say my first Pokemon partner, was actually Striker. Yep, this little guy right here was my first ever Pokemon. But obviously he was a, you know, a Charmander at the time. And I played the heck out of that game before I moved on to Sapphire. And then obviously Heart Gold and all that fun stuff. The only sucky part about it is that I actually don't know where my Leaf Green cartridge is. I kind of lost that years ago. I should probably try to look for it again, because I think I have an idea of where it could be, and I would really like to see that game again, just to kind of relive all the stuff. Because with Leaf Green, I didn't actually ever restart a new save, so that my cartridge should hold, hold my original save. 
because for my, all my stuff, I have both Leaf Green and Fire Red. So whenever I replayed through Kanto, I just replayed it through Fire Red instead of Leaf Green. But I really should try to go find that. Could be a video idea. Okay, level 7 for Spyro. So he is set up, basically. Alright, let's get up Sing. Movie is rap, but I can't mess with him. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. I'm gonna just get uh, Sing the rest of the way up to level 7, and then we'll continue onward into the Brilliant Forest. Just because so then we have more team members than just Striker being able to be battle ready. Yeah. I, I really, yeah, I probably really should look for Leaf Green. But yeah, obviously let me know in the comments down below what your first Pokemon game was and what your first Pokemon starter was, because I am very curious about it. Seven? Yes, we are. So I'm going to go quickly heal back in Viridian City and then head on over to the Viridian Forest. Now, unfortunately, I have to be very careful in the forest because I don't have any potions yet. Because, like I said in last episode, for whatever reason, Game Freak decided not to allow us to buy any healing items, like potions and whatnot, into the Pewter City. Which is fine, because obviously Pewter is technically where you would actually need them. But... And we can't buy Awakenings either, which kind of sucks. Because sleep in this game is, like I keep saying, broken. And it's mainly because you can either wake up turn 1, or never wake up at all. Alright. I'm going to get through Viridian Forest, and then once I get past there, I'm going to obviously take care of any extra training that I will need. Alrighty, honestly let's put Striker back up front, just so he can, because obviously he's going to be our main force. Plus I really want to get him leveled up as quick as possible so we can get our future Charizard. Though I'm probably not going to get Charizard until at least the fourth gym. Okay, first up is... Oh, it's an Onyx. Which kind of sucks. You know, I'm kind of realizing that rock types are actually our big weakness. But luckily, it is an Onyx, and it's going to know absolutely nothing. Plus, Onyx is kind of a bad Pokemon. Mainly because, obviously, he has a lower attack stat than a uh, Onyx. But I really don't have a way to deal with rock types, because I don't have water or grass. All I have is fire and normal. Okay, Screech. I mean, my defense is lowered, but it shouldn't... Onyx shouldn't be able to kill me from this range yet. Watch this villain. Yeah, even with Screech ain't doing much. And that's mainly because, again, Onyx... Zero attack. Okay, level 8. Perfect, perfect. And Hypno's up next. Yes, I'm going to switch into... Let's go with Sing. Man, it feels really good being able to use the speed up button again. But at the same time, I should probably be really careful, because I'll probably speed up and do something a little dumb. Like, I accidentally get one of my Pokemon killed because I'm speeding up too much. But anyways, I'm just quickly heading back here because, unfortunately, again, I do not have any other way to heal my Pokémon at the moment. And plus, we have speed up, so it doesn't really matter because I can instantly get back to where we were. Oh. And unfortunately, speed up in the earlier generations just make me faster than the Flash. Versus in like Emerald and Ruby and Sapphire, it is actually more a lot more controllable. Here it's just I just zoom across everything, 
to a Dodrio. That would have been kind of a good encounter. Would have helped me with my rock weakness, but it would have been nice. Ooh, a nut. Okay, we got a nugget. Alright, good. So we have a guaranteed way to buy potions once we get to Pewter City, which is good. Isn't there a trainer down here? Can I battle? Okay, I can battle you. And by mean, can I? I mean I will, because again, I need the experience. I need the XP. Okay, we got a Gloom. Like we have Shrek off the front. Okay, Gloom's down. And we go straight up to level 10 thanks to that. Perfect. Next up is Ponyta. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep Striker in. Cool. Scratch, and that's gonna be a Bapu Beat. Level 11, perfect, perfect. What's your last Pokemon is a Blastoise. That is scary, and yes, I'm going to swap out, and I'll swap out the Spyro. Hi, Blastoise. Your sprite in this generation is quite funny to look at. Alright, um, first things first, let's paralyze it. Okay, and it already has Water Gun. Which luckily won't do much to Spyro, but the strike here probably would have one-shot. Okay, now we have speed. And now we just play the rap game. Now we just speed up and play the rap game. And it's thanks to the rap game that I can take care of mainly like 90% of all Pokemon in this generation. The only ones I'm really going to struggle against are obviously rock types. Like against water types like Blastoise and all that fun stuff, I'm not overly worried. And that's again mainly because, you know, Spyro resists pretty much anything in this generation including water types. So I should be a-okay. A Dragonair. Cool. Would have been not, I could have caught and got another Dragonite in the future, but obviously again, since Dragonite kind of sucks, I really don't want it. Also, is there? Oh, there is an item back here. Give me something good. Another nugget. Awesome, sweet. So we are set with money for a long while then. Is what nuggets are five thousand a piece, so we have ten thousand dollars right now. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Alright, 12 minutes in, so we'll have another good little bit for another training session, and oh, hi Kingler, how you doing? Okay, now paralyze it. And up now we just play the rap game again. Rap is such a broken move. Alright, level 10 with Spyro, which is good. Alright, and this is unfortunately the last trainer before we get to the gym. Because the only other trainer we have I have left to battle against is the first gym trainer before I get to Brock. Alright, so let's get to Pewter City, heal the team, and then do a little bit more training. Because let's see, Brock's Ace, if I remember correctly, is going to be level 14. So I kind of want to get my three main Pokemon up to at least level 12. Again, I do plan to eventually train up Snake and Dash, but for right now, they're kind of just here to be... Uh, they're, they're, they're basically just kind of here right now. And unfortunately, every company's going to say, Hey, is this a new area? Why can't you get an encounter? Because unfortunately, this generation, I mean, I should say, this area is the same route before Viridian Forest. So where I caught Sing, this would be the same area. It's the same route. At least it is in the, the modern generation of Kanto. So as much as I would love to be able to catch a new Pokemon here, I cannot. I will not be able to catch a new Pokemon until I can make my way to Mountain Moon. So, kinda sucks, but, eh, what are you gonna do? Okay, let's swap to Striker. Ooh, I can 
one chance. Hello. I would have liked to have caught you, bud. Okay, level 12, the striker, so he's good to rock and roll. But ultimately, it's going to come down to what Brock's ace will be. Okay. Let's go over to Sing, train him up. Again, another good thing I love with Fable Lease, it did it while well, it obviously has seen. It is quite bulky. Which is good. Alright, uh, let's see here. Level 9. Is there a way that I can switch the order of my moves so I stop accidentally clicking on. I assume there has to be. It's probably a key combination, but I don't really know. Poison, don't want to mess with that, so I'm going to quickly head heal. Cool. Okay, level 10. Almost ready to take on the gym. I kind of want to, like, get at least one more level with all my Pokemon in. Oh, hey, I am disabled. Poison because it will kill my Pokemon in the overworld. Sand Shrew. Level 11. Cool. Cool. Now I go back and refill on double slaps. I would use Metronome, but again, I can easily roll into explosion. And as much as it, as funny as that would be, I really don't want to lose my any team members yet. Okay, level 12. Alright, I'm just going to boost up striker level 13 at least. Since obviously he's the ace. Thirteen, I told you. All right, let's heal up one last time and then go buy potions, and then we will go take on the gym. Where is Pokemart? There it is. So I have to sell my two nuggets to get my ten thousand dollars and buy a crap ton of. Potions, because I don't can actually do that. And I'm gonna, with the money I have, I'm going to buy a good 20 of them, just so I'm stocked up. Okay, what else can I buy? I can buy an Awakening, I'll buy a couple of those just to be on the safe side, and I should be good for now. I'm gonna save the rest of that money to buy Pokeballs once I'm done, and uh, let's use Spyro to be my lead. First things first, obviously head to the gym. Let's go take on the gym trainer, heal, and then we'll take on Brock. If you guys made it this far in your video, comment down below who your favorite Kanto gym leader is. For me, it's either Lieutenant Surge or Misty, honestly. Alrighty, let's see here. have a Venusaur, sir. That's cool. Oh, I'm playing a rough game. Rap game is very strong with Spyro. Level 12, and you're about to use a hit on bleed. I'm gonna change. No, I'm going to continue using Spyro. Alright, cool, cool, cool. 
Okay, now what's left right now is Brock. I'm going to leave though, because again, can't be too careful in another lock. It must always be at max health before we take in a gym leader and whatnot. Especially in this generation, because I don't know if I'm walking into a bunch of Weedles or if I'm about to run into two Mewtwo's here. Just all going to depend on what Brock has, and if the randomizer wants to, uh, wants to be mean to me yet. As I imagine the randomizer is probably going to crank it up eventually. Okay, let's see here. Is there any items up here I can grab? No, this is an area. Alright, Brock. Let's see here. Um, yeah, I'm kind of comp comfortable with my team. We're all around the same level. Just a little below the ace, so we should be fine. Hello, Brock. How you doing? Yep, you're a PC gym leader. My card defense. Yep. Alright. First gym battle. Let's do this, Brock. What do you got for me? What do you have for me? You have a Lapras. That's kind of scary, but... Yeah, no, this should... Yeah, no, you should not know Ice Beam just yet. So it's time to play the rap game and speed up. Lapras, thankfully, all it, should, all it knew was Water Gun. Because, yeah, Lapras doesn't get Ice Beam to level 30. And you have a good Fable. Um, I'll just keep going with Spyro. And just play the rap game. Wait, why do. Wait, why does. Why does your good Fable know Flamethrower? Hold on. Wait, does that mean that. Why does your Gafable know Flamethrower? Is that going to be the TM? Yeah, because the Ace should know the TM of the gym. So, I'm so confused. Why does your Gafable know Flamethrower? I mean, if it's going to be the the uh, TM of the gym, I'll gladly take that, because that would be a fantastic move to teach both Striker and Spyro. But thankfully, thanks to Rapid being an absolutely broken move, this is GG Brock. And that's the first gym badge. Cool. Minimal effort. Like, and people are like, oh, but you said Dragonite's moveset kind of sucks. I mean, it kind of does. I mean, again, Rap is good, but there's a lot of Pokemon that it cannot handle. It, can bear, it won't be able to handle rock types, and obviously it won't be able to touch ghost types. But alright, Boulder Badge. Official League Badge. I'm using outside Flash. Okay, but what's your TM? Wait, take this with you. TM34. Contains Technique that. Oh, it does contain Flamethrower. Oh, okay. That's so that's why it's Gafable new flamethrower randomly. Okay, so I guess Yeah, because the ace of the gym leader should know the move of the TM. That's really weird though. Because in I know on other randomizers it doesn't work like that. That's really interesting. That yeah, would explain why it's Gafable this randomly new flamethrower. But that's actually really, really cool. That's a really good TM to get so far right now. Alright. Obviously, teaching it to Striker would be amazing. But can Spyro learn it? Okay, Spyro can learn Flamethrower. I mean, again, it would be amazing to give it to Striker right away. But I mean, Striker's going to learn it eventually anyways. Plus, at least with this, Spyro will be able to get another move right away. Do I want to give it to Striker right away? Um, that's a good, very good question. Um, yeah, that is a very good question. 
Because obviously Striker will be able to benefit from it heavily with getting one of his strongest moves right out the jump. But obviously Spyro needs it because he needs a new move. Because right now his only attack and move is Wrap. Thirty-five for special. I mean, obviously your hit stats would be much higher than, than strikers. Hmm. I think I'm going to hang on to that TM for now and kind of think about what I'm going to do with it. Yeah. If you guys have any suggestions on what I should do with that TM, leave it in the comments down below, because I'm kind of thinking of giving it to Spyro, just so he has another move that he can use, because I won't be able to get... I mean, no, no, no there's another TM coming up right away. Yeah, because there's a TM right inside Mount uh, Moon. And it's usually, like, what, Bubble Bean? Bubble? So I should go see what that TM is first before I make my decision on whether to teach Striker it, because again, Ember is honestly his best move right now, and Flamethrower will be able to do much more damage. Like, Flamethrower would have easily one-shot this Magneton. But I'm gonna hang on to it just to kinda see what that TM is gonna be. Like, if it's a good TM that Spiral can learn, I'll teach him that, and then I'll teach Striker Flamethrower, because we have that right away. A Nido King. Um, yes, I'm gonna swap out. Um. Go to Spyro. Ammonite, a water and rock type. I gotta stay with Spyro. I need a I need a grass type desperately. Like I need a good grass type. Man, if I would pick Loom at the beginning, I would be in a much better spot. But I mean, I don't regret picking Striker. But, I mean, you just gotta play the rap game. But, I mean, eventually rap will take out anything. But obviously, the main problem is is that it'll just take a long, long time. Hey, Venonat. Executor, I'm gonna stay in the same. I think I got Awakenings. And 
amount of wraps. Nice. And then a Bulbasaur. Okay, cool. Honestly, getting like a Venusaur would probably be my, my best grass type. Last battle. Oh, Alakazam. And speaking of one of the scariest Pokemon in this generation, hi Alakazam, how you doing? Too powerful, bud. Whoops. Oh well. I mean, I probably would have added it to the team just to give a new another bond. But eh. so okay, we're at 32 minutes into the episode. So let me quickly heal up. Oh wait, this is where we can get the magic card, right? You have to put them. You can store them. Th isn't this where we get the magic card? That not in this chain, this game. Hello there. Here we go. Magic card. Oh, they got a Tauros. Okay, cool. Tauros. I'll take that. I'll name him Bull. Uh, where is it? Oh. Oh, we got a Tauros. That's kind of cool. All five though, so I gotta train him up a bit. Oh, cool. We got Tauros. That's a pretty decent Pokemon. Pretty good at physical attacker. Alright, so I'm going to first off swap over to Spyro. Then I'm gonna quickly obviously get my next encounter, which is ooh, Charmander, which is species. Because if you don't know, there are a couple clauses to allow to me to re-encounter, one of which is a species clause. Because obviously, since I already have a Charmeleon, I have something from the Charizard line, so I can just re encounter. Also, this is TM. TM20. What are you? TM20. Please be something good. Dream Eater. Not good. Crap. Okay, so I guess I gotta make my decision off camera. But first, I wanna get my encounter here. And it is a Caterpie. I mean, beggars can't be choosers, I guess. Um, I'm gonna catch it. I'm probably not gonna use it, but I mean, at least it's something. I mean, Butterfree can be kind of useful. I mean, you know, learn like always a lot of status moves. Doesn't it also get confusion, or is that in a future generation? Caterpie's got went to PC. Could have got a horsey. Which would have been actually useful because I need a water type. I mean horsey's not the best water type, but it will at least put a known water gun. But alrighty, I'm gonna heal up. And that is going to do it for today's episode. Thankfully we got we took on Brock, came up victorious, and got a very, very good TM that I 
really need to make a decision on who I'm going to teach it to. Obviously, it's between Spyro and Striker. Obviously, Striker because obviously Flamethrower is one of his signature moves. It's what he would benefit the most from. And Spyro kind of needs it too because he needs a new move other than Rap. I mean, Rap is probably one of the best moves he will. Obviously, is one of the best moves he'll get, but I need just, he just needs something new. And if you have any suggestions on what to do for that, comment down below. But uh, yeah. That's going to do it for me today. Thank you so very much for watching today's episode. I ha hope you have enjoyed. Make sure you hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already, because again, I am trying to hit 400 subscribers before the end of the year. And with that all said, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. I'll talk to you all later. Peace.